Okay, so we now have uh, this problem before us where we want to sort of visualize what this uh, conceptual splitting of the LP turbine would look like. And here's a, a sketch I made of, of the answer. Um, so, right, our thermal efficiency now includes the entire core plus part of the LP turbine. Um, and that uh, accounts for sort of the work that was extracted to drive the core. Um, and so actually I realize there's a little bit of an error in this figure. Really this purple box ought to include uh, this red shape here as well. So really what we're capturing is essentially everything except the fan part, the, the part of the fan that goes through the bypass and the part of the low pressure turbine that drives that. So this transfer efficiency that we've introduced captures the losses in the low pressure turbine and the fan, um, specifically the parts that are sort of downstream of this theoretical point where we've extracted enough uh, shaft power to um, run the whole core, basically. So downstream of this hypothetical location, there's you know these, we have these additional losses as well as the losses in the flow in the bypass stream, and that's what we can capture with this idea of the transfer efficiency. Um, but the increase in propulsive efficiency for a high bypass ratio turbofan much more than offsets the additional losses due to a, a non-perfect transfer efficiency. So the jet velocities are really the key to the engine design. Um, when we set the fan pressure ratio, we're essentially setting the bypass jet velocity. And if we choose uh, the core, when we choose the core jet velocity, um, what we're really selecting is what fraction of power available from the core is going to be extracted in the LP turbine and how much is left over to generate core thrust or the core jet. And the core and bypass jet velocities are always going to be similar. Um, and the reasons for this is that it reduces noise and it increases propulsive efficiency. Um, and once we choose these two parameters, so the fan pressure ratio and the ratio of these uh, of jet velocities, um, then the bypass ratio follows. So most modern regular engines have bypass ratios of around 10-ish. Um, the geared turbofan engines have higher bypass ratios of up to 12. This fan pressure ratio is really a, though, a, is a better measure of kind of what type of engine it is than, than the exact value of the bypass ratio. Or another way to think about it um, in terms of classifying what kind of engine it is, um, because this is mainly determined by fan pressure ratio, is to think about it in terms of specific thrust. Specific thrust is just the net thrust over the mass flow rate of air, so it's the jet velocity minus the flight speed. Now we have our engine station numbering that we're going to introduce here before we move on. Um, it's a little bit of an odd nomenclature. Um, but it's more or less the international standard, so it's worth adopting. Um, for a turbojet engine, it's straightforward enough. Our sort of inlet is at station one, then at the inlet to the compressor is station two, uh, inlet to the combustor station three, inlet to turbine station four, inlet to nozzle station five, and uh, nozzle exit basically station nine. Um, the reason that we skip from five to nine is that we allow for the possibility of an afterburner in here, which would uh, entail additional stations, um, but we're not going to talk about afterburning engines in this course. In a turbojet or a turbofan engine, it gets a little more complicated. Um, because we've now got essentially uh, two separate shafts, we have to introduce new uh, stations in between. So instead of what you might have logically called this would be station 2.5, Instead, we call it station 2-3. It's not station 23, it's station 2-3. Right? It's halfway between station 2 and station 3. And same thing in the turbine. Um, after the high pressure turbine, before the low pressure turbine, we have station 4-5. We use two digit numbers to represent what's going on in the bypass stream and basically just add a one in front of the equivalent stations from the core. So after all of the compression is done in the bypass, so after the fan, that would have been station three in the turbofan, and it's station three here as well. So in the bypass, that's station one three. And at the exit, we have that station nine. So for the bypass, that's station one nine. So 
if we want to put together the TS diagram for a turbofan engine, we actually need two because we've got two flow streams. We need one for the core flow and one for the bypass flow. So here's an example of what that would look like. Um, in this example, the core and bypass jet velocities are set to be exactly equal. The cruise Mach number is 0 0.85 at 31,000 feet altitude. Fan pressure ratio is 1.8 with a core pressure ratio of 32. And the turbine inlet temperature is 1407K with 90% turbine and compressor efficiencies. So for the core flow, right, we have temperature and Kelvin versus entropy. And this looks what you'd expect, how it would look like, right? This, this is pretty much how, what we're used to from uh, thermodynamics. So we've got an isotropic compression from, uh, sort of going from static to the stagnation conditions at inlet. And then we have uh, non-isentropic compression through the, the fan route, further non-isentropic compression, uh, fan route and booster, I should say, then further non-isentropic compression through the high pressure compressor, constant pressure combustion, non-isentropic expansion through the high pressure turbine, um, non-isentropic expansion through the low pressure turbine, and then um, isentropic expansion to create the core jet. The flow through the bypass looks a little different. Um, we have, again, the same thing at the inlet. We go from the static to the stagnation condition isentropically because that's how we define the difference between those things. Um, and then we've got the uh, part of the fan work input that operates on the bypass flow, so that's a non-isentropic compression. And then that's it, right? Then we have the, the nozzle, and so we have isentropic expansion back down to the atmospheric pressure. So a much simpler diagram for the bypass stream. So we previously specified the core um, for our, our new efficient aircraft engine. So basically we have um, the outlet conditions at station four five at cruise. So our next task is to determine the low pressure turbine pressure ratio, such that the core jet velocity has the desired ratio to the bypass jet velocity. That'll determine how much power gets drawn from the low pressure turbine and thus how much power is available to the fan. We do this uh, by starting uh, basically to specify a fan pressure ratio as an initial guess. Uh, again, right, the bypass nozzle uh, pressure ratio is higher due to the forward flight speed. Um, so it's, it's the product of, this is the conditions into the nozzle. This is the product of the fan pressure ratio and the uh, effect of forward flight speed we'll assume that the flow in the nozzle itself is isentropic. So then we can directly get our nozzle um, inlet stagnation temperature and the outlet velocity if we have a fan efficiency and fan pressure ratio. Um, and then we can write this in terms of the, the outlet velocity. So this is the bypass jet velocity. Then to get the core jet velocity, this is based on the low pressure turbine outflow rate. Um, again, we'll assume that the core nozzle is isentropic, so P9 equals PA. Um, and then we get the jet velocity for the core in terms of P9 over P05, which is the um, nozzle pressure ratio. But the P05 is the unknown, right? This is the thing. And P05 and P05, I should say, are the unknowns. And what we can do is we can choose the core jet velocity by varying the low pressure turbine pressure ratio. Um, in practice, we want these jet velocity magnitudes to be similar. We'll talk a little bit more about this later today. Um, and for now, let's say that we'll get the maximum propulsive efficiency if the velocities are equal. So if we choose that for now, we'll get the um, velocity of the jet in the core is equal to the velocity of the jet in the bypass. And this provides a constraint on the system. So on the last slide, I just stated that setting the jet velocity ratio to be 1 is going to maximize propulsive efficiency. What I want you to do is explain why this makes sense, why you think this is the case. So think about this for a couple minutes and try to come up with an answer for yourself before you move on to the next part of the video.